We're presenting at the Big Picture Research Fair today at the University of Essex. Right, on to the next speech, and it is Jonathan who is going to talk to us about the wonder fractions. <laughs> Okay, hello everyone. Um, my topic is from the Department of Mathematical Sciences and I'm talking today about fractals. Fractals is a very new uh, cutting edge area of mathematics that first appeared with Benoit Mandelbrot back in the 1970s. And it aims to take the natural shapes that can be seen in life, such as the broccoli at the top and the wood fern, which is at the right hand side, and map them using mathematical techniques. For example, on the far left and the bottom right are completely virtual representations of those two plants bottom left and the far left don't actually exist. They're purely natural. Now, what fractals are, is they're a kind of shape that has two properties. The first is that they have complexity throughout. Normally, if you have a normal shape and you zoom in, it gets the same very quickly. A straight line graph will become a straight line graph as you zoom in. But with things such as ferns, if you zoom into a fern, you still get the shape of a fern. So what this second, one pro second property is, is self-similarity. Now, the, the idea of self-similarity can be easily shown by this picture. So can anyone tell me what that's a picture of? Oh. A square? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, oh dear. Four squares, all coloured red. <laughs> you know, if you colour all four the squares red, then there's no way of knowing. This is the idea of self-similarity. Before I show you that there's four squares, there's no way for you to know that there are four squares. The idea of self-similarity is that as you zoom in, you get the same thing that you started with. For example, this is a famous fractal. It's called the Siempinski carpet. Uh, first from the 1920s by the Polish mathematician Warklaw Siempinski. The idea is it starts with a square. And then in the middle of the square, in the black, you put a square hole in it, which is a third of the width, a third of the length, and a ninth of the area. And then, at each step of the uh, algorithm, you take any black that's left and a square and you drill another white hole in the middle. So for example, we go from this black square of one hole in to having 10 squares. And then again, for example, here there's a square. So we add more squares in and more squares. And the idea is eventually there are so many holes once you reach infinity that this shape doesn't even have any area. It's a 2D shape that's got dimension less than 2. In fact, its dimension is about 1.892. Because there is just no area. And every point is just points. There's no solid line running through there. So what we tried to do in my research was take a fern. And this is a specific fern here called uh, Clinton's wood fern. And try and map it using techniques such as transformations. Now, don't worry about the maths here, but all it does is say how the fern, which we're looking at in the middle image, is squashed, rotated, for example, into different shapes. And by just using these four encodings, we get that entire image on the right, which is actually very similar to the one on the left. But not all of these fractals are from the real world. A famous fractal is called the Mandelbrot sect, and this is from Mandelbrot, and works by finding the functions of imaginary numbers evaluated at infinity and giving them colours. And by doing that, you end up getting this very interesting shape, which as you zoom in, 
It gives incredible detail at every point, and even at some points repeats itself. So here comes the final question I wanted to ask. What is the dimension of broccoli? Now, for example, broccoli itself, you might think is three-dimensional, but as you zoom in to the broccoli with a microscope, you'll notice that small bits of it actually have the same shape as the whole thing in total. So, in a way, we know the broccoli actually has dimension less than three, which you'd normally expect. To find the exact number requires mathematical research and the use of very advanced formulas, like here. What I basically found was that an average broccoli, over 20 long calculations, has four big bits, uh, 23 medium-sized bits, <laughs> and about 59 small pieces. That was a lot of counting broccoli. <laughs> if you plot this now in a graph, we can find that the um, steepness of the graph, the gradient, describes what the dimension of the broccoli is. And the conclusion, the answer to the question, what is the dimension of the broccoli? And this one I'll leave you to it with. 2.15